my name is Marty and welcome to part 24 of the C++ SFML game development series. Last video I showed you guys how to set up SFML and C++ on Windows without an IDE. From this video on it doesn't really matter if you use an IDE or if you don't use an IDE, it's kind of like a left or right decision here, it doesn't really matter. But from this video on I'm just going to be using without an ID. Here's the game where we left it last video. You can see that we have a platform. We have a player colliding with that platform on all sides. A lot of you guys said in the past couple of videos that there's actually much more optimal ways of programming this that we weren't actually using. For example, an if statement is actually slower than if you just use a mathematical operator. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at in this video is optimizing our code. We're seriously cleaning this up because this code is going to get really advanced later on. We're going to be dealing with vertex arrays, shaders. It can get pretty complex fast. C++ is such a complex language. It's very important to keep your code as concise as possible. Otherwise, you're going to get lost in your nest of tunnels pretty quick. In this video, we have a lot to do. I feel kind of overwhelmed, but overwhelmed in a good way because when there's like a lot to do with programming, it's just, it's so satisfactory to actually see your game getting up and running the next advancement in the game. It's just a ton of fun. And I think that's why I like to program simply because it's the problem solving. I don't know, maybe I'm just weird, maybe, but my brain just, it has a need to solve problems. Anyway, so how I like to set up Sublime and then the Windows batch script is I like to go have the batch script run nicely like right here to make it so you can resize it on Windows 7 anyway. So you, I have to have this line of code mode 1000, otherwise you won't be able to on Windows 7. Weird bug, but just, it's okay, we can go with it. And now what I'd like to do is I go, let's go open up source, right click on main.cpp, open with Sublime Text, and then I like to have Sublime Text on top right here, so that this way I can switch between the two, compiling, debugging here, then we're editing the code here. It's a really nice workflow. My brother Quentin, he gets kind of freaked out when you put drinks and liquids beside his computer. What did I mean? I'll spill it on his computer, so don't tell him. I mean, it is technically on my desk. My bowl of soup is, it's on my desk, so it's fair game. Let's start by making this code more readable. And I've said before, I don't like to use the unary scope resolution operator too much, which is like you go SF and then you, if you use a vector 2F, using a namespace is not always a good idea because there's actually an STD vector as well. That's right, two different kinds of vectors here. An STD vector has nothing to do with a vector. A vector has two points, or actually three points, possibly, if you're dealing with 3D environments, X, Y, Z. If you're dealing with 2D environments, just X and Y. An STD vector is a dynamic array. It's an array that is unallocated memory, so that it doesn't know how big the array is going to be. It's just going to, it's going to figure that out as you go along. It's kind of unfortunate that it's actually named a vector, because it has nothing to do with a vector whatsoever. This is why using this unary scope resolution operator is important. So what we can do actually is if you just take out this using namespace sf, control save, and let's just compile it right here in a Windows Bash script. It's going to give us error after error, which is kind of what we want because we need to figure out where we need an sf colon colon. One right there, one right there as well. And that looks looks all good for me. Okay, so for the platform class, finish, check. Let's keep on a scrolling. Player class, right. What are we going to need here? Right there. We're going to need one right there. We're also going to need one in the constructor. Wherever we use a vector 2f, which I don't know if I've explained it before, a vector 2f, a vector, you guys probably don't know what a vector is. A vector is a mathematical point as an x coordinate and a y coordinate, or a magnitude and direction. Or a vector can possibly have three components, which is x, y, and z. Z being your depth, how far away you are. You, we would use a 3 if we're dealing with 3D environments, but for in our case, just 2. F declares that it's a float. So all, we also need to go right here and go SF colon colon. Now down here, again, we did use a vector right here. And vectors, it ju it's just a nice way of storing two floats in one variable, kind of. So that this way, you don't have to move around. It's easier to move around one variable than it is two. There we go. So that should be good for our player class, hopefully. Now let's scroll down into our main window. Render window, it does belong to SF, the SF namespace. This here is a namespace, not to be confused with the class here. So there is a difference. The unary scope resolution operator can be used with both a class and a namespace. So in this particular case, we're dealing with a namespace. Also, video mode, yeah, that's definitely belongs to the SFML class. Let's keep going. Font, there's actually a lot that we use for SFML here. Text as well. Actually, take out this font and text unneeded for now and right there a sprite again sprites do belong to the sfml class with sf namespace and right here for interact belongs to the sf namespace as well texture again right got all that good and texture again 
That's a SF member of the SF. We got the actual space there. No need for that. Event does belong to SF Mall, so add two there. It belongs to the SF namespace. I keep saying it belongs to SF Mall, but this really means it belongs to the namespace. So hopefully I'm not too confusing. Right, and now this monstrosity of a if statement here. If statements do slow the program down, so this is not the optimal way to actually program this. In fact, we're having two if statements where one line of code would have handled this it could perfectly fine. But before we add more bugs to our code, let's just finish this up here so that we don't end up with it. It's always good to you take it one step at a time. Okay, just actually just take out everything except for that first one because we're going to clean that up right away here and just take out the player.update. I'll be willing to bet a loony that that should do it. Okay, one more missing right here, SF colon colon. And let's save that and see what happens. Compile and it should be 100% good. Right, so let's compile and run it and we shouldn't actually be able to move anymore. You can see we're not moving because we took out the line where we were actually updating. So we can take that back out and now, instead of an if statement, there's a much more efficient way to do this. This SF keyboard is key pressed right here. It's a Boolean type function. So that means it returns a one or a zero when you call that function. Let's go up actually right here. Instead of player up, again, we player up is kind of vague. I mean, this could belong to what what is player up exactly. It's always good to program like as if you know that somebody else is going to check your code. Instead of player up, I mean like what is player up even, we want to go with key up because if someone knew who had no idea of what we we're doing with this game came and looked this, at this, they would know, okay, boolean, check, it's a boolean, it's key up. This is definitely often to do it if we're pressing a key. And, then th and they'd think to themselves, yeah, that makes sense. But player up, this could belong to the player class. It's just kind of confusing non-simple way to do it. So what we can actually do here is copy this much here, be sure it's that much, control C, and then take that out the complete if statement. I always like to go with key right first. It's just, I mean, you can go with whatever order it is, but be sure you be consistent with that order because the parameters are order specific. So we want to be sure it's in the correct order always. So let's go key right equals, and then you can paste that line in there. Key right equals SF is key press. So this is essentially going to be setting key right equal to one or zero based on this if statement here. Just think of this as an if statement because that's what it already is. Hit enter a bunch of times, paste it in four times. Now not only have we saved ourselves four lines of code here, we've also made this ten four times more efficient. And instead of key right, let's go with key left here. And again, make sure it's left here. Like I was saying, it's important to keep that order consistent. So I'm going to change up the order of these variables because functions are order specific and the parameters, they have to be in the exact order you tell them. Stick with the system so that you can do it from memory. So you don't have to scroll up, waste five seconds of your life. And this way it's just a, it maintains better workflow. Key right, just to keep it consistent. And then we we'll also want to go key left because that's, if we're doing that order, we got to stick with it. Key up key down now we've got to scroll up and we can actually just copy these control c and we can just paste them in right up here now down there we're actually giving it the parameters we don't have to declare what data type it is it already knows the compiler already knows key right is already a boolean because we said it was right here now in the function definition however you do have to say what type of data it is and these are booleans now you actually could there is actually no need to use a booleans you could actually use an integer and just use one or a zero data types they don't actually mean anything in c++ boolean integer because it all comes down to memory at the end of the day booleans is just syntax so to make the programmer's life easier right so our compiler is now saying what is this player right because we just took out player right it's key so what we have to do is we can actually just find or replace with select it control h find player right so we're going to find player right and we're going to place it with key right so every time it says okay every time sublime says oh here's a player right replace it with key right replace 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 all good there actually wasn't that many so there's it's just going to take us longer to actually activate the shortcut and whatnot let's just replace it manually it's going to be it's actually just going to save us a ton more time than we think and that should do it control save Let's compile it and run it and see what we get. All right, and our game is functioning exactly as before, except we've cleaned up the code a little bit. It's going to run actually slightly faster because every statement you have does slow your game down. Alrighty, and that sums up this video. If you have a question, leave it down below. Thank you for watching and be sure to like and subscribe. In the next video, we're going to be creating multiple platforms for our player to actually move with. We're going to also be dealing with scaling these platforms. So until then, Marty out.